Hello and welcome to this talk on BRC's topic of ensuring product authenticity. Now, you know, authenticity is one of the main aims of all the BRC standards, right? It's always product safety, quality, authenticity and legality, right? Authenticity being a key topic, as I say, in all the BRC standards. Now, I'm using the food standard in this talk. However, as I say, it does feature in the other standards as well. Interestingly, uh, though we're looking at 5.4, I'm not going to cover all the clauses here, but interestingly, when BRC requires the risk assessment to be done, they're specifically asking for the risk assessment to be done on food raw materials. And as a food business, you don't have to cover packaging. However, the packaging standard also requires a risk assessment for the uh, authenticity of the products being produced. Uh, even storage and distribution standard, even if you don't own the products that you're storing or transporting, a risk assessment is still required to uh, look at the materials being handled so that there are literally no weak links in the entire supply chain, regardless of what your business does. Uh, even agents and brokers need to do this type of risk assessment and have assurances in place. So let's just take a look, as I say, at the food standard. Um, now, the first clause talks about the competency of the team um, we need, uh, let's let's go and have a look at that slide together. Uh, so that's the team. Yeah, competency is the key word here. The standard uses the words having knowledge and experience. Uh, knowledge and experience will give competencies. So there are courses that you can go on or you can do your own CPD, your own research, your own continued professional development to understand the topics here. Um, so that uh, as long as the auditor can see evidence of competency. Uh, and this is typically demonstrated through the auditor interviewing those who were involved and or looking at the output of their work, which is the risk assessment, uh, demonstrating that risk is being mitigated. All right. Now, BRC also says that you can use consultants, that's your external expertise, but bear in mind that the standard says in 124 that the site takes ownership of the work that any consultant does. Yeah, so that's important. The site understands, takes ownership, can answer the auditor's questions. Likewise, remember in 353, that's approvals of your supplies of services. If you've got a consultant, you need to demonstrate how you've approved that consultant and monitored their performance. Of course, QTC provides consultancy services, and we have a document we provide to our clients um, that you can then give to the auditor to show uh, the basis of approving us as consultants. Same applies to trainers, by the way. Uh, okay, let's move on. So provision of knowledge, business needs to know what's going on in the world today because it gives you a clue about potential threats of fraud. Um, uh, we provide our clients uh, with weekly updates relating to their products. Uh, so if there's something going on with a particular ingredient, uh, if there's um, um, evidence of fraud, uh, in the supply chain, uh, that's when we notify them with these weekly alerts. And that's the kind of thing that you want. You can do your own research, of course, on uh, various portals are available out there for you to be looking at uh, the FSA, the RASF portal. There are a number of um, sources of information where you can find this information. But don't forget that your auditor wants to see evidence that you're actually checking. So take a screenshot, share the email that you see from us with your colleagues, or make some kind of evidence or documented summary uh, that you are, in fact, looking at the information just to make sure that, no, it doesn't apply to our business, or yes, it does, and this is what we've done about it, okay? Uh, then your risk assessment itself, this is your detailed risk assessment covering all food raw materials, and the BRC glossary in the food standard is quite useful where they specify that if BRC is using only the term raw materials in a clause, they mean food raw materials and packaging raw materials. However, if they specify food raw materials in the clause, they're being specific to food only, not to the packaging raw materials. So yeah, this is where I was saying it's interesting that they only need the risk assessment to cover food raw materials. But we know that fraud can occur in packaging as well. And so you can always go above and beyond BRC's requirements and include packaging in your risk assessment. Um, I recommend you do do that uh, just to make the risk assessment comprehensive. We always have to meet BRC's minimum requirements but by all means, you can always exceed their requirements, right? Okay. And we're specifically assessing the risk of adulteration or substitution. Now, you'll see on the slide there that I'm asking, what triggers do you have in your business to initiate a review of your risk assessment? Because any risk assessment is only worth having if it's up to date. If it's not up to date, if it's not reflecting what's happening today, it's pointless, right? So you need triggers. If you've got a new raw material, a new supplier from a different part of the world, 
if there's something going wrong uh, going wrong or happening in the industry today regarding fraud, a new type of fraud, for example, a new type of test, any of those things need to trigger the review. So make sure your procedures, your NPD procedures, your supplier approval procedures, that there's a trigger in the system to trigger an update of this risk assessment when any of those things occur. All right. And, uh, and again, that's what the auditor is looking for. So uh, your risk assessment will show you where you have these risks the auditor wants to see and your customers would want to see that you've got assurances in place to mitigate the risk. Now, you look at any one of those and a single one of those points alone is nearly as great as a combination of these points that we see, right? So yeah, by all means, ask for a certificate of analysis. But in addition to that, do some testing, yeah, according to the risk, yeah, um, commensurate with the risk, I should say. Um, all of those are great ideas, but we really ideally want to see combinations uh, wherever it's justified in your risk assessment. All right, so let's be practical about that. And then 545 is talking about claims and being able to prove the status of the claim where the claim relates to the raw material. So there are lots of different kinds of claims, as you can see there, um, and you want to be able to prove it. You can prove it with all your records. And a common nonconformity that I just wanted to point out was that very last point there where the auditor is looking for a documented mass balance exercise carried out on a six monthly cycle. And this is not your usual annual traceability test or your usual annual recall test. This is in addition to that, where you are specifically doing a mass balance on any raw material that has a claim. And in fact, you need to do a test to represent a certain kind of claim. So if you've got one kind of claim on one type of raw material, pick a raw material to test that claim and your mass balance proves that you haven't mixed up raw materials right? You haven't mixed up quantities, everything works out, and that's your evidence. Um, if you've got a different type of claim on a different type of raw material, do another test on that type of claim so that you are showing your business really can protect the final status of your finished product because it depend depended on the claim of the raw material, right? And that has to be done every six months. The only exception to that rule is where uh, your claim is related to certification uh, standard, such as organic, right? If your organic certification provider, if their standard already specifies that you do a periodic mass balance, then you're going to follow their requirements instead, right? So uh, if there is such a requirement, in most cases, such a requirement doesn't exist in their standards. And so BRC says in the absence of the certification scheme requirement, we want you to do one mass balance every six months. Okay, And that's, that's quite commonly missed uh, and ends up being a nonconformity. Last slide just to take a look at here, and this is that we need to maintain certification for any such claims as you see the examples on this slide here. So you can't make a finished product and claim it's organic unless you as a business has organic certification with such a certification body. Regardless of whether all the raw materials were organic or not. You have to, every, every point in the supply chain has to maintain that certification status, and that would include your business. You'd need to be able to show your BRC auditor that you've got your organic certificate. It's up to date and uh, yeah, it's not expired and it covers all the materials uh, that you applied for with the organic uh, certification body who issued you that certificate. All right, I hope that makes sense. We haven't looked at absolutely everything in there. Last quick comment is sometimes people get confused about chain of custody. Although the heading in section 5.4 includes the words chain of custody, BRC doesn't expect you to demonstrate full chain of custody as those words truly represent having visibility of the entire supply chain. That's not what BRC needs. They typically need you to go back one step and forwards to your customer. And that's your bit looked after, right? There are exceptions to that rule, of course. If you are purchasing from uh, agents or brokers or wholesalers, you need to go one step further back. And we've made a, a separate video on that in the past. Um, uh, there, there are also other exceptions, such as if you have the BRC additional module of the meat supply chain, that is about full visibility of the supply chain chain of custody. Um, also, if your business uh, has a global gap certification, which is a separate certification scheme entirely, they also have an additional module uh, onto that certification where full supply chain visibility or chain of custody is required. I hope that's useful. Uh, we provide training and uh, consultancy services, so do get in touch if you need any further assistance. Thank you. Mm -hmm.